Kaplan, an applications engineer here at Index. I'm standing in front of a C200, which is one of our very popular high production single spindle machines. I'll show you around the inside a little bit and tell you about some of the features, I'll show you a little bit of the control, and then I've got a demo part set up in there that I'll run for you. You can see that the machine is very compact and easy to access. Uh, it's very easy to touch the back of the machine, so changing tools, doing anything in here is super easy. Um, you see it's got the main spindle and counter spindle. You have two options here, a D65, 65 millimeter or a 90 millimeter. This is the 90 millimeter. Um, we do have a reduction chuck over here in the counter spindle. Uh, and then you have three turrets. Um, turrets one and two have a real X, Y, and Z axis. Turret three has an X axis and then the counter spindle moves for its Z. You can still do tandem operations with turret two and turret three on the counter spindle. You just sync the lower turret to the counter spindle and they, um, it tracks the counter spindle until you program some relative motion. Um, you can have VDI 25 tool holders, which would be uh, 14 spots, or you can have uh, VDI 30 tool holders, which this machine has, which is 10 spots per turret. Um, our VDI tools are pretty awesome. We have the W serration, where it interfaces with the turret, and it makes it super repeatable for taking the tools out and putting them back in between different setups. Um, when you take the tool out and put it back in, you can expect it to repeat within a few microns of where it was originally. Uh, you can also see here the gantry. I have it jogged out. Um, this is what swings in to grab the workpiece and then deposits it on a conveyor belt back behind me. I'll show you a little bit about the control. This is kind of the main page for running the machine. It shows you your position, distance to go, speeds and feeds, where you are in the code. Um, down here on the lower part of the control, you have your feed rate override, which is super helpful. Spindle speed override, reset, start, stop, normal stuff. Um, you have this confirmation switch over here. If I were to go into jog mode, it would light up. Um, that's usually the case here. Things that are active or can be used light up. So when I twist that, my um, X and Z and Y buttons light up and that's gonna allow me to jog the machine around with the door open. So yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with the door open by just using this confirmation key. Um, I'll jump into the program here real quick. Here in this rough um, turning group, I have a rough turning cycle. And if I open it up, as is often the case, you get this cool mask um, with a graphic on the left and um, parameters on the right, which influence um, the cycle. And uh, yeah, you can see it's pretty helpful. This would be a really easy way for me to change the depth of cut right here at the machine just by changing one number, not having to reprogram stuff. So yeah, all, a lot of these, our cycles, have um, these really helpful masks. If I go down to the um, transfer, I'm moving the part from the main to the counter spindle, again, we have this really helpful uh, mask, which tells you exactly what you're um, inputting and what uh, influence it has. Go to the parameters page. Um, here you have your tool list and wear corrections. Um, you also can see stuff with your one underscore three file, which is our tool change file. Um, this file makes it super easy to see if you've got the right tools loaded in the machine or if what you have loaded in the control matches what the program needs. Um, it also makes it really intuitive to do changeovers. It kind of walks you through the process of taking tools out and putting new ones in. I'll go ahead and close the door and run through a part here. The 
So on the main spindle, we're doing some pinch roughing. On the counter spindle, that was a finish or a facing pass, and then we're milling. On the main spindle now, we'll do some pinch milling. Then on the counter spindle, drilling. A couple different spots. On the main spindle, we're doing a finishing pass right now, and once it gets past the threads, we go ahead and start the threader. Doing some chamfering on the counter spindle and now some tapping. And I think we're doing deburr pass on the main spindle while drilling at the same time. A little chamfer. And then this is just a simulated cutoff since I'm just tracing the part. Um, typically the counter spindle would come forward, grab the part, pull it, or yeah, and then cut off. So yeah, that's a pretty good example of the uh, kind of part that would get run in this machine. And I'll go ahead and turn you over to one of our regional sales managers. Thanks. Thanks, Kyle. My name is Tim Pottridge, and I'm the regional sales manager for the East Coast. And I was just going to walk you through a, just a few other key features of the C200 machine. Here's a front picture of the C200 machine showing you what the uh, limited floor space it takes to house this machine, one of the advantages right off the bat, small footprint. And of course, third turret. The third turret is one of the main features of this machine. Immediate 50% gain in productivity and output over a two turret machine. And pre increased tool capacity allows processing of more complex parts. So you can have up to 14 tools per station, meaning that you can hang on to tools between setup and just have resident tools that you typically use already located inside the machine. And then the third turret ability to serve either spindle allows third turret to efficiently produce parts requiring disappropriate front or back working. So when you're having a little bit of problem balancing um, the machining process, you may have just as much work at one spindle to the other spindle that you can use that third turret to bounce back and forth between spindles that aid in cutting down those uh, features and reducing cycle time. Identical dual spindles, well, this is one of the keys to a lot of the index products, especially the C200 machine. You have identical main and counter spindles allow maximum flexibility in part processing. Um, so when you, um, you know, when you have two spindles that are, are, are like, you never have to think about a weaker spindle when you're trying to uh, program your part and come up with a machining strategy that gives you the optimum cycle time. Uh, high precision and liquid cooled spindles. Index single slide system, another one of the dynamic features of the C machine. Uh, this is, slide is showing you a close up of the uh, scissors mechanism that controls the X and the Z axis per turret. Unique index guide system provides kinematics that ensure significantly faster dynamic response because of the less movement and less moving parts, maintain stiffness, vibration, dampening, and accuracy, and it helps with eliminating potential effects of thermal growth as well, too. Here's a more broader view of the uh, kinematics uh, per turret. You can see the Scissors mechanism being driven by a screw, again, that controls the X and Z axis of the spindle. And this is a picture of the back of the machine. It's very open. Once you see the back of the machine, you'll you know what I'm talking about. Very, very few moving parts to generate the X and Z movements that we need. Flexibility machine design enables pinch turning, pinch milling, dual process drilling, and flexible part support options. So, you know, this pinch turning and pinch milling and all these different processes are, are not only a reduction in cycle time, but they can really balance out the, the process and they can come up with uh, a more stable cut as well, too. Integrated automation. The X Center robot cell offers simple turnkey automation. This is a new design for us which recently uh, came out. Space safety design, as you can see, the still the floor space is, is small, even with this uh, unit on here. It's completely integrated with the machine. Accommodates secondary processes such as cleaning, deburring, et cetera. Enables unmanned operation with no interruptions 
from part loading or unloading. So this is capable of most post-processing operations that you want to do and don't want to do inside the machine, such as part inspection or just part stacking. Thank you very much for your time, and now we'll open the floor for questions and answers.